AP Calculus AB Kids, here comes section 3.5. This one is kind of a summary of what you've learned in the last two units. Each problem that they give you here, you've got to decide what's the predominant derivative rule that I'm going to use. And so just to remind us of the rules we've learned so far, in unit two, the first thing we learned, it's the lovely power rule, which allowed you not have to take limits and f of x's plus h and all that stuff that we did. So power rule. There's a rule for the derivative of constants. We know that the derivative of a constant is zero. There's a constant, what's called the constant multiple rule. That's like if you had an f of x, that say it's uh, 5x squared, and you want to take the derivative of that. The derivative, the constant stays the same, the power comes down in front, and you take the power to one less. So, Sometimes I have a constant in front. That's a constant multiple room rule. Uh, we did the sum and difference. Sometimes you'll see these as polynomials. And so all you need to do is take the derivative of each piece. We learned trigonometric, trigonometry, the derivative of sine, cosine, tangent, like all those different derivative rules. We learned rules for exponential equations exponential stuff. We learned rules for logarithmic stuff. Remember your note card that we've made with all the stuff on it? You had the product rule and you've had the quotient rule. That was all things that you learned back in unit two. In unit three we learned the inverse rule, inverse functions which led us to inverse trig functions. Those are those fraction ones. We learned implicit, that's x's and y's. And you've got different variables going on. And we also learned the lovely chain rule. And so there are all the, the different types of derivative rules and um, equations that we've learned throughout this. Now your note card might be helpful to this. Obviously you can't use your note card on the test, um, but it might be helpful as you're trying to decipher which rule you want to use. So we're going to look at a few of these. Here's the ones I picked. Number two, by the way, I think there's only 10 problems, but I thought number two might confuse you. So that's the first one I want to look at. Let me read it to you and see what you think. If f and g are functions such that f of g of x is equal to x for all x in their domains, and if f of a equals b and f prime of a equals c, then which of the following is true? What a classic AP question, right? Because you read it and you're like, I have no idea where to start this whole thing. So let's go to this statement right here. f of g of x. That means that g, the inside guy, is the inverse of f. All right. If g is the inverse of f, here's f, that means that you're looking for g prime of the inverse, b. And if that's what you're looking for, now let's take the rule for inverses. It says it's 1 over f prime of f to the negative 1 of b. All I'm doing is going to uh, back to our rules. And actually, in the midst here, what I know is that if I take the derivative of f to the negative 1 of b, well, f to the negative 1 of b would be a. So what I really want to find, I can take this whole thing and replace it with a, because remember, a and b are your uh, x's and y's that you switched. So this fraction actually equals 1 over f prime of a. And if that's the case, do you know what f prime of a is? Well, back over here, you know that f prime of a is c, so your answer is 1 over c. g prime of b is equal to 1 over c, and that is your answer, c. So if you got lost in all of that craziness, just take it back to your fundamentals. Take it back to your basic equation 
uh, or for your rules for inverses, and there you go. Uh, the next one I picked, I'm looking. The next one I picked is number six. I thought number six could stump you because see how you have square roots and square roots? That could be a bit of an issue, right? So I'm going to rewrite this, my f of x, first of all. f of x, they want to know what the derivative is. So if I take this, I would never ever in a million years do the derivative with square roots in it. We would always put them as powers. So if I put it as powers, this would look like 1 plus x to the 1 half, and all of that is being raised to the 1 half. So you got to rewrite it in a power form so that you can then take the derivative using your power rules. This one's going to chain rule on you too, but the predominant thing is your power rules. So f prime of x, the power comes down in front. My group goes to one less power times the derivative of what's inside. Well, the derivative of one is zero, so it's the derivative of x to the one half. So it's going to be times one half x to the negative one half. And then it's a matter of me putting this together so I can figure out which is equivalent to that, which one of these five are equivalent to it. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a fraction. Okay, in my fraction I have a one-half and it's being times by a negative one-half. So I know I have a one on the top and a four on the bottom. That just takes care of the numbers. Then I have this grouping that's in the denominator. I know it's in the denominator because of the negative power, so I know I have a square root of 1 plus x, the square root of x, I guess that is, right, to the 1 half. That takes care of this whole thing, and then this, the 1 half's already taken care of, remember I made that 1 fourth, x to the negative 1 half, where is that? That's in the denominator, and it's another square root of x. Do I have anything that matches that? I look, I look. Now, I don't have it in the right order, but 4 square roots of x and the square root of 1 plus the square root of x goes with d. And so that one gets a little hairy because you've got lots of different um, square roots going on with it. Square roots within square roots within fractions. Ugh. All right, here's the last one. I want to do number 9. I think number 9 would be the next one that might stump you. Again, these inverses, for me, they tend to be the hardest, so I'm picking the ones that I would think were, were the worst, but let a function f be defined as f of x is x cubed minus 2x minus 4 when x is greater than 1. Let g of x be the inverse function of f of x, and note that f of 2 is 0. Find the value of g prime is 0. Now, we just did a question like this when we did number 2. In class, I would let you try it and I try it, and we'll see if we match, but because we're videoing, I'm trying to find g prime of 0. Well, write out what it would be. It would be the same thing as f prime of f to the negative 1 of 0. Well, f to the negative 1 of 0 means that I'm really looking for 2. Remember, you switch your x's and y's. So we're doing the same thing we just did in number 2. I want to know what f prime of 2 is. And so, I don't know. But I can surely figure out what f prime of x is. Got my equation here. So I've got 3x squared minus 2. If I want to know what f prime of 2 is, I've got 3 times 2 squared minus 2. That is 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. And so I get an answer that is 1 over 10. Is that my choice? Sweet! A it is. Okay. That takes care of section 3.5. You just not need to think about what your predominant rule is that you're going to use and then apply that. You may end up into other rules as well, um, using the chain rule or something else, but there it is. Picking the right procedure for finding derivatives, section 3.5. Shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class.